So the first time that we received a report of this elk uh, was actually by one of our wildlife uh, officers. We were on a sheep count in the Mount Evans wilderness last July, so July of 2019. And uh, he sent, actually sent me a photo of this elk with a tire around its neck. Um, it appeared to be a smaller bull, probably a two or three year old elk. Um, and you know, it being up in the wilderness, we didn't really expect to, to be able to get our hands on that elk uh, just because of the proximity uh, or the distance away from, you know, the, I guess, the rest of the civilization. It was harder to get to the further they are back in there. And usually the, the further these elk are away from people, uh, the more wild they act. And, uh, you know, th that certainly played true over the last year or two um, in that this elk is just very difficult to find. We've had about six sightings of this elk, three or four of which have been on trail cameras. So really we've only had about two uh, that have been uh, in person. Uh, one of which was from several miles away with a, a spotting scope and that was our wildlife officer above tree line. And another one was uh, behind a home um, kind of over in the, the Deer Creek Canyon, uh, Kester Road area, uh, which is just due west of Chatfield. So it's pretty remarkable. This elk is, is moving all the way from Mount Evans Wilderness in the summertime. Uh, this last year it spent the winter uh, along the Kester Road in uh, south uh, east conifer area and has now moved a little bit north but is in somewhat of the general area um, we kind of expect that this elk once the rut starts that this elk is probably going to move back towards the evergreen area um, because that's where most of the cow elk hang out so it either had to get this around its neck as a very young elk before it had antlers um, most likely it was an elk in the winter time and uh, you know it, it's anybody's guess how it actually got on there it could have been a, a big stack of tires um, I've seen it where people feed animals and animals come in and put their heads in things um, I've had deer with buckets around their necks uh, because people are artificially feeding animals um, so it could really have been a number of things but it would have had to been in the winter months when the, ant, when the elk don't have antlers. Generally, once we have animals that have things around their neck, um, they don't come off very easily. You know, with things that are tangled up in their antlers, once the antlers shed, obviously that will fall off. Or in some cases, we are actually fortunate enough to, to tranquilize and then remove the netting or other material from their antlers. Um, we would certainly like to catch up to this elk, uh, but this elk is definitely acting like a wild elk and not wanting to be seen, uh, which is good. That's what we want uh, our wildlife to be doing, is to acting, you know, acting wild. So some of the challenges of catching an elk with uh, any sort of um, thing around its either neck or in its antlers, one is we've got to be close when that animal is spotted, and we've got to have our tranquilizer uh, equipment with us. And so getting that all uh, together, you know, most animals don't like to be seen, um, you know, really during the middle of the day. So oftentimes it's very early or very late at night. And so, uh, you know, getting staff up there to help out with a situation like this can be a little bit more complex. Um, if we do have an animal that uh, is acting real wild, one, it's very difficult to get in within range of that animal and actually tranquilize it. Um, you've got to be, you know, anywhere from 20 to 40 yards on average uh, in order to tranquilize an animal. And a large bull that's exhibiting very wild behavior, um, you know, it can be hard to get hundreds of yards from some of these animals. They certainly act wild um, and, and, you know, respond uh, negatively when we get close. Um, you know, it's unlike a lot of our, our other elk in conifer and evergreen that are very tame. Uh, the bulls tend to be much less tolerant of uh, human disturbance, uh, except for during the rut. And so this fall may give us a good opportunity to, to try and get closer to this elk, especially now that this elk is getting a little bit bigger in size. It can start competing with some of the other elk. And if this elk does move up towards the evergreen area to, to rut, 
um, there's a good chance that it will be seen. Uh, during the rut, they lose a lot of their inhibitions, and so uh, the likelihood of, of us being able to capture that animal increases uh, as the rut goes on. Uh, with that said, uh, one of the challenges right now is those antlers are still soft, they're very vascular, and so if uh, we do tranquilize that animal and damage the antlers in, in some way, um, it can lose a lot of blood from, from the damage. Um, and two, uh, being able to physically cut that tire off is, is much more difficult than uh, when those antlers have hardened up and basically that bone is, is now you know, no longer living material. You can cut the antlers off and uh, just take that tire up and around the neck of that elk. You know, during the rut, one of the challenges with animals that are entangled is that uh, there's a potential that it's going to tangle up with another animal. And uh, more commonly what we see is an animal, an animal with fencing or say a hammock or as part of a swing set um, or netting in his antlers. If they tangle with another elk, and they certainly will during the rut, that those two animals may become entangled if nobody sees them, a lot of times one or both of them will end up dying. And uh, you know, the risk is if another elk tangles with this elk, it may get that antler caught within that tire and the same thing happens. So um, you know, we definitely want to track this elk down. And so if folks have any sort of sightings, uh, you know, the more recent, the better. And uh, we'll do our best to get on that elk. Uh, but we know where it's hanging out in general right now is very thick and steep terrain. Um, not a lot of homes in this particular area, and so the likelihood of us um, capturing that elk right now is pretty slim until it moves to a little bit more favorable uh, habitat. So the biggest thing people need to, to realize from a situation like this is that um, animals get into all kinds of different things and they need to make sure that their properties are cleaned up. Uh, over my career I've seen everything from um, you know, plastic pieces around the hooves of deer and elk uh, to swing sets and basketball hoops and tomato cages and hammocks, um, tires, trash can lids, you name it, I've seen it around their, these animals' necks. And so, um, you know, it, it's a good reminder if you live where wildlife live that you should go and walk around your property, clean things up, and, uh, you know, try and just take down any sort of obstacle that may impede uh, wildlife movement or uh, entangle them.